hate. They are not be a devil or to stand in our way. We are to have so much faith. Church, I'm telling you, my fingers are pointing back at me. We are to be able to go into the hospitals and just walk by like old Peter did in the shadow. We'll heal the sick and raise the dead. Well, God's not that way. Let me tell you one thing. My Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. A church that tells me a lot. If God stood with the apostles, He'll stand with you and I. If you're in this thing to be like, you're in the wrong thing. I tell you tonight, God is real. And somebody's going to make God bigger than their problem. Hallelujah. God's mighty big God. He's a big God, Brother Mark. Uh, the Bible teaches me that He made the heavens and He made the earth uh, and He made everything that's in them. Uh, I tell you, the devil's come too late uh, to tell me that God is not still yet able to save. Uh, he's come too late to tell me uh, that God will not answer our prayers. Uh, he may not answer them when we want Him to, uh, but He will answer our prayers uh, if we all hold on contend for the faith. Uh, the Bible says it's impossible uh, to please God without faith in the heart. Uh, he said that He is a reward and a reward of them that diligently seek Him. So that tells me, and God, if you don't move today, I've got to go back tomorrow. If you don't move tomorrow, I've got to go back another time. Don't give up. Hold on and believe in the Word of God. Let the devil see that you're making God bigger than the battle that's a fight in you. And greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. And the Bible says that they ain't no weapon formed against us. A shall prosper. A church tonight, I believe. That one writer said that we may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. But we're afraid to speak out because somebody may run us down. Somebody may talk about us. But that's all right. They talked about him, did they not? This man was without sin. There was no fault in him, Brother Matt. But the world found fault in him, did they not? But thank God tonight. We're serving a mighty big God, a one that's able to raise the dead, open up the blinded eyes, and open up the deaf ears. And when Jesus come through, and they were the multitude constantly followed him. They were the multitude constantly followed him, Brother G C. And because they were the need of something. I know that we all need God to move in one way or another in our life, don't we? Yes, sir, we sure do. I tell you, God is a big God, church. He's bigger than the problem that you and I have. He's greater than the storm and that's ahead of our way. I tell you, God is alive. He's a real God. He's a mighty big God. And I can read in the Word of God. And there was one that they could not get to him. And Brother Mark, but some Somebody know that God was a healer. Somebody said God is greater than the sickness that's on this man's life. And they could not get to him for the press. And they began to go up on top of the old house. And they began to dig up the roof and let him down. Why? Because somebody made God bigger than the problem that the man had that was sick of the palsy. Sometimes we, we need to let God be God in our life. Sometimes, Brother Mark, I find myself uh, uh, murmuring and complaining. Uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, that's as good as the devil wants. Uh, he wants us to murmur and complain uh, and doubt the Word of God. Uh, but when we can realize, God, uh, you're greater than the problem that I have, uh, and then we're going to see God begin to move. Uh, I tell you tonight, church, uh, He is a real God. Uh, he's alive forevermore. Uh, he's not in the grave. Uh, the grave cannot hold Him. Uh, and when they took old Daniel out there, uh, to him in the lion's den. And the Bible says that Daniel was an excellent man. This man, he prayed and sought the face of God. And the king said, well, I'm going to put him over everything. I've got other words. And you know what? And jealousy began to creep in. Jealousy began to come in. And they began to watch old Daniel. They couldn't find no fault in Daniel. Why? Because this man was a praying man. And the Bible says that Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He would go into his house and his window being open toward Jerusalem and the Bible said that he knelt upon his knees and prayed three times a day and give thanks before his God as he did before time why because he wasn't worrying about what they had against him because he knew the God that he prayed to was able to deliver him and the Bible says that they said we can't find no fault in this man except we find it concerning the law of his God they knew that Daniel was 
going to pray uh, when it come a certain time uh, because they done hear the man praying before. Uh, and the Bible says uh, they took old Daniel out there uh, and they put him down in that lion's den. Uh, but what if Daniel was uh, would be guest? Say, God, uh, I know that I'm going to leave this world today. Uh, but Daniel did not fight against them. Uh, I believe that he walked right up there, don't you? Uh, and went right in that lion's den. Uh, why? Because uh, he made God greater than the lions that was in that den. Uh, I tell you, God is greater than your problem. He's greater than my problem. If we can believe God, we will see God begin to move. And the Bible says that old king, his sleep went from him that night. He was worried over old Daniel. He prayed that God would help Daniel. And before, before the rest of them could get there, the Bible said that he made haste and he went out to the lion's den. And before he got there, he began to holler at old Daniel. Oh, Daniel, and the Bible says, he said, Daniel, is there God able to deliver it to you? He said, he'll deliver me. He said, he will deliver me, oh, king. I tell you, I tell you, and we've got to believe in the word of God. And we've got to let the world see that we serve a mighty big God, Brother Mark. I don't know what kind of problem you got, but don't let the devil cause you to look at your situation and make it bigger than a mighty God that hung between the heavens and the earth. If he brought old Daniel to the lion's den, he'll bring you and I to our troubles, won't he? I believe that he will. I tell you, God is alive forevermore, church. He's the real God. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ask or think uh, according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, and tell what the Bible says. Uh, you know the devil don't want you to believe the Word of God. Uh, he don't want you to hear the Word of God. Uh, but I pray God give me ears to hear with. Uh, and give me those ears, God, uh, that I need to hear the Word. Uh, and will cause me to believe uh, and make you greater than the problem that we have. Uh, I tell you tonight, God, uh, He is a real God. Uh, and the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood and that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, didn't he not? He said the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal but they are mighty to God pulling down the stronghold. He said the name of the Lord the strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. So why should we frown? Why should we go around down? I tell you tonight God is not down but he's up. And when the devil sees you going through hell and you can still yet lift your eyes toward heaven and begin to praise God in the time in the hard times I believe that we can say devil you've got the wrong one you're fighting the wrong one because I'm going to believe the word of God I'm going to sing till I sing or a kingdom down I never you know and brother Mark they used to sing that old song but it seemed like that you don't hear it no more because there's so many people that stays down in the dump a church I believe that we can sing our way out, don't you? It's just the same as we can speak our way out. The Bible says that death and life, it lies within the power of your tongue. You can either speak victory or you can speak doubt. If you want to go through trouble and hell, keep speaking doubt. Keep making your problem greater than God. And you'll be right there this time next year. And maybe just a little bit lower. But I tell you tonight, I done found in the Word of God. Paul said, my soul does magnify the Lord. Whether by life or whether by death. The Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. A church, we may leave this world, believer, they may plant you in the ground. But I tell you one thing. If you've got the great I am abiding within you, and when that old trumpet sounds, the death's going, the grave's going to give you up. It cannot hold you. It don't have power over you. And because the Bible tells me, and Brother Mark, that he went into the heart of the earth, and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. I tell you, we've got a lot to rejoice about. Do we not? But sometimes we want to murmur and sit around feel so sorry for herself. We want to feel sorry for herself. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself. He don't want you to believe in the Word of God. He don't want us to believe in the power of God. 
if he can cause us to doubt the word of God, uh, he knows that we ain't going to go nowhere. Uh, but when we can believe the word of God, uh, don't the Bible say, blessed is he uh, that's never seen, but yet believe it. Uh, that what the word of God says, uh, sure it does. Uh, but we want to be like old Thomas. Uh, Lord, I ain't going to believe uh, until I can see it for myself. Uh, I tell you, God's got some real genuine out there uh, that will tell you the truth. Uh, we don't have to see it uh, to believe it do we know uh, no sir uh, brother Mark I wasn't there uh, when Lazarus rose from the dead uh, but I believe uh, Mark or Luke and John don't you uh, I may not be able to quote the scriptures uh, exactly right down the line uh, but you know what I'm saying uh, if you read your Bible uh, I tell you today we need to read the word of God. We need to know the word of God more than we know our social security number. I tell you today the devil, if you don't know the word of God, you just probably end up being deceived in the time that we're living in. But church tonight, the devil, he's a slick, he's a slick old fox. The Bible says that he's more cunning than any beast of the field. He can make something sound so real. Brother GC, he can make it look so real. And if we don't know the Word of God, uh, we love will slide right into it and don't even know it. Uh, but I tell you, today we're living in a time uh, where the Bible said, Know them that labor among you, did they not? Uh, I tell you, we can turn on the TV uh, and they can act like they're having a revival uh, and they want to fight against the name. Uh, and that's not a revival church. Uh, and that's a deceiving spirit uh, that's a sweeping America today. Uh, I tell you where the truth is. It's in that little building in the head of the holler uh, that's got Jesus over top of the door. Well, only where there's two or three there. And that's where the real power of God is. I don't believe that's in a, in a great big number. Do you? No, sir. I don't believe that it's in them numbers. Where there's 15 or 20,000 that looks like the world. And Brother Mark, that's a cussing every time that they get mad. But what, you, what are you saying, preacher? We're living in a deceiving time where we need to make God bigger than the battle that we're against. I tell you, we're living in a time uh, of trouble church uh, if you don't believe me uh, uh, just keep on walking after the flesh uh, and you're going to see what I'm uh, talking about uh, but one thing about it uh, uh, sure it old flesh uh, it loves that stuff brother Matt uh, it don't want to go where the truth is uh, because there's some things that it's got to do uh, to mark up how many knows what I'm uh, saying uh, there's some things uh, that the old flesh likes to do uh, and we can't allow it brother GC uh, if we're going to go to the great heaven uh, that he said I'll go to people a place for you. Preacher, I can't make it. I can't live right. I can't neither. But the God in me can help me to live right and to walk right and to talk right. How I many understand understands what I am saying? The flesh is your enemy. And Brother GC, you're not my problem. You know where my problem is? I'm looking at him right there in that glass. Church, we can put fingers and blame it on the pastor. We can blame it on our neighbor next to us. But you know what it boils down to? It boils down to the the old flesh. Uh, ain't it funny how we want to blame everything and everybody else for everything? When we need to say, God, it's me, help me, because you're bigger uh, than my problem. Uh, you're a, a greater than the problem that I face. And uh, uh, what a Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego uh, uh, would have bowed down to the king. Uh, uh, they said, O oh, king, we're not careful to answer thee. Uh, uh, the God whom we serve, uh, uh, continue, he will deliver us out of the burning uh, fiery furnace. And uh, uh, when he does that, uh, he will deliver us out of your hand. Uh, uh, they made God uh, uh, bigger than that old furnace that was a popping and a cracking. Uh, uh, maybe no doubt it was blood red uh, but did that scare them no sir uh, and they said God is bigger than that uh, and when they threw him in the furnace of fire uh, and guess who was in there with them uh, the Lord Almighty himself uh, and when the devil sees uh, that you in the midst of your battle uh, and guess who he sees uh, uh, carrying you uh, he sees the two nail scarred hands of Jesus uh, uh, bringing you through the trial uh, why I preach it because uh, you made God bigger than the problem uh, and that's up against you a church tonight we need to have that spirit a Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and God they may throw me in but I'm not going down I'm going to come out rejoicing and the Bible says the only thing that was burned on them was the ropes that had them tied they weren't even a 
smell a fire on their clothes, Brother G.C. Think about that. Uh, think what a kind of God uh, that we're serving. We're serving the same God uh, that they are serving. You might not agree with me or believe me, uh, but that's the genuine truth. Uh, we're serving the same God uh, that they are serving. Uh, the God that brought them through the fiery furnace, uh, he's big enough, Brother Richard, uh, to bring us to the little trial uh, that we are going through today. Uh, well, preacher, you don't know uh, what I'm up against. Uh, but yeah, I know a God uh, that sent all powers to given to me, uh, uh, heaven and earth. Uh, uh, what are we going to do with the scripture uh, that he said, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. You need to use the word on the devil. We need to use the word on him. That's why I always tell people, you need to know the word of God. Don't believe me. Don't believe the next one. I know that we'll tell you the truth, uh, but get in that Word and begin to search it out for yourself. Uh, and then when somebody gets on the floor uh, uh, preaching, you'll know if they're preaching you the truth or not. Uh, uh, that's what's wrong with America today. Uh, uh, they, uh, they are not uh, reading the Word. Uh, uh, they're just uh, believing anything coming to uh, uh, carrying the Bible. Uh, uh, yes, sir, that's the time we're living in. Uh, uh, they don't know worries of God or not. Uh, I tell you, the Bible said, Know them that uh, labor among you. Uh, uh, don't know me uh, after the flesh. But after the spirit part, how you know somebody, brother GC, by the word of God. That's how we know. That's how we know by the word of God. If they are preaching us the truth uh, and get behind that man uh, and let them know uh, uh, that, that, that they're going to doing the right thing, uh, and let them know, uh, and brother Mark, uh, they look at me and say, "You're crazy for driving all the way to Gilbert Creek." Uh, and when I've got news for the devil, uh, the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, and there is liberty. Didn't he not? He uh, just ain't ever church you can go into uh, and feel your liberty in God. No, sir. Uh, they the biggest majority of the church. Uh, they will not let me in their pulpit to preach the word of God. Why? Because uh, we're living in a jealous time, church, uh, where the devil is scraped in uh, with so much jealousy. Uh, and Brother G.C., uh, he ain't you and he ain't me and he ain't Brother Mark, uh, but it's the Spirit of God. Uh, it's the anointing of God. Uh, I say, God, if you don't use me, uh, use somebody uh, because these uh, folks, uh, there's somebody out there needs some help. Somebody needs some help. But Brother Mark, I say, and Lord, you know, I, I was telling somebody the other day about Brother Mark. The Bible says, Render to him what's new to him. I want him to hear this. I was telling somebody about Brother Mark the other day. I said, That man is not a jealous preacher. Church, you'd be surprised how many churches you can go into and they're jealous the pastors are. They're jealous. I said, Brother Mark ain't got a jealous bone in him. I said, I, ever since the church has been open, I think I've heard him preach one time here. One time. That lets me know that he wants other people to be used of God. Brother Mark, the Bible teaches us that the fivefold ministry. I believe that it ought to work in our churches, don't you? When I was a pastor in Kentucky, I said, God, one thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to let the fivefold ministry uh, work in the church because these folk uh, are sitting among us uh, uh, that I might not be able to reach, uh, uh, that it might take somebody else to reach out there and help them. Uh, and I tell you tonight, God is greater than all the problems uh, that you and I have. And he, hey, don't you believe that He is? Uh, I believe that He is, don't you? Uh, and Brother Mark, if you don't do nothing else, uh, I'm going to preach that He's a healer. Uh, if you don't never do nothing else, uh, I'm going to to preach uh, and that he is a deliverer uh, and that he can save your soul from a burning hell uh, and I begin to think little David was just a little man uh, he was one that he laughed at uh, but you know what he was stood saw in his army uh, and when they wouldn't go down there against the Goliath the giant uh, he said I'll go down there uh, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to show him uh, what kind of God that I've got uh, and Saul said look here David uh, you can't go down there uh, you ain't nothing but a youth but here is a man uh, that's been a uh, he's a he, 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 He's been a man of war uh, uh, from his youth. Uh, and David stood about this tall on him, I imagine. Uh, but did that scare David? No, sir. Uh, he began to tell old Saul. Uh, Saul, when I was out there attending to, the, uh, to my father's sheep, uh, and they came a bear in there in a line. Uh, I took one out of the flock. Uh, and I went out uh, and I grabbed him by the beard and then I smote him there. Uh, and you know what David was a saying? Uh, my God is bigger than a giant that's standing down there making his brags. Uh, church, don't the devil look so 
big sometime. But you know what? He looks so small. And when we got God on our side, and when we can believe the Word of God, the devil ain't nothing but just a little bitty mouse. I tell you tonight, God is a big God. And David said, no, I'm going down there. I'm going to show him just how big my God is. And when he went down there, stood there, the Bible says, and Brother Matt, that he took his staff, and as he crossed the brook, he got him five smooth stones. And the Word says that he went down there, and here comes that old giant out there. What am I, a dog? Making fun of the man of God. What am I, a dog, that you would come out here to me? David said you had defiled the army of the living God. This day God's going to deliver you into my hands. Had old giant standing there looking down at little David. David wasn't looking at the giant as he was nine foot tall or something. Uh, and David was looking at him as a loser. Uh, that's what you and I need to look at our problem today uh, as a loser uh, that is not going to prevail over top of us. Uh, but David said, uh, the giant looked at him and said, I'm going to feed your flesh to the fowls of the air. And David said, no, you're not. I'm going to feed your flesh to the fowls of the air. And when the devil says uh, that you're going to be shut down, uh, say no, David. I'm not going to be shut down. You ain't big enough. Church, we need to speak to the devil with authority. We need to take power over him. David said, no, you're not. I'm going to feed your flesh to the fowls of the air. Here stood that old giant with all of his armor on. And when little David, the Bible says that David made haste and he didn't beat around the bush getting down there. Like we do a lot of times coming to church. We'll be and thump around the bush, Brother Mark, dreading going out to the house of God. But David, the Bible said that he made haste and he run down there to the giant. He was, he was so uh, ignorant to get down there uh, to let, uh, let all the army of Saul uh, and all those that stood behind uh, uh, the mighty big man that they thought was so big. Uh, uh, Brother G.C., he was so ignorant to get down there uh, uh, that he couldn't hardly stand it uh, and that he had to run all the way down there, Brother Richard. Uh, and when he got down there, and guess who won the battle? You done read the story, you know. David won the battle. Why? Because he made his God bigger than the problem that was standing before him. If we can make our God greater than the problem that we're facing, I believe that we're going to come out on top, don't you? I tell you tonight, the church ain't going down. The church is going up, ain't you? I'm glad to be part of that church. Sure, when Peter and James and John and all of them was being whipped for this gospel, I tell you, they made God greater than uh, then the, and, and the kings and the priests uh, that stood against them, didn't they not? Uh, I can read in the Word of God uh, that when old Gideon went down there uh, uh, to meet the Midianites, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that he started out with 32,000. Uh, and the Lord looked at him and said, Gideon, you got too many. Uh, you're going to uh, have to go back and tell them something because uh, uh, there's too many of them. Uh, and if I deliver the, uh, the Midianites into the, your hands, they're going to say, look what we have done. And the Bible says, Brother Mark, the Bible says that they laid in the valley with them and their camels <coughs> like grasshoppers, like the sand of the sea without numbers. There was hundreds and thousands of them. And here was a man that he didn't know what to do, Brother G.C. He didn't know what to do. All he could do was when he looked down that valley, he didn't see nothing but thousands and thousands of them. And here he was going to have to go down there and defeat them. Ain't that like you and I today? God, I can't do this. We're outnumbered. We're outnumbered. We can't go against them. But church, tonight we need to make God bigger than the enemy uh, that's uh, fighting you and I tonight. If we can believe God, uh, I believe that we're going to have victory, don't you? I believe that we're going to come out victorious. Uh, uh, but here he was out there, uh, and he looked down over the valley, and he seen nothing but multitudes on top of multitudes. Uh, and he said, God, uh, I can't do this. Uh, and when the Bible said, Gideon, uh, the Lord told him, said, you got 32,000. Uh, I want you to go back and proclaim in their ears. Uh, and uh, uh, Whoever is afraid and fearful, uh, let them turn back. 
back and the Bible says uh, they were about 22,000 of them uh, uh, turned and went back and there left 10,000. Uh, and now what you think about that? Uh, his number decreased instead of increasing. Uh, and the word says uh, that he looked at Gideon and said, Gideon, you still you got too many. Uh, oh, couldn't you just imagine no Gideon? Uh, Lord, now you want me to go down there and fight a battle? Uh, you're going to have to give me somebody to go with me. Uh, but you know what? Uh, he was making that uh, bigger than the God that was talking to him. Uh, then he finally realized, uh, well, God, uh, you're greater than they are. Uh, I'm going to believe you for your word. Uh, and he began to tell them. He began to tell them what God told him. Take them down to the water. <coughs> and I'll try them there for you. i tell you what, it'll separate them. It'll separate them, Brother Mark. It sure will. And the Bible says that that old Gideon took them down there to the water and they began, he told them what signs to look for and all. You, you've read it. You understand what I'm saying. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that everyone that lapped water like a dog, in other words, sent him off to his side, didn't he? Uh, but the rest of them kneeled upon their knees and they drunk the water. Uh, and the Bible said there were 300 left. Now, could you imagine going out fighting thousands and thousands with 300 men? That was a large number with God on your side. That was a, that's all that he, he, he really didn't need them if he believed God. Just him and God. I believe that, don't you? I really believe and all we need is God. Church, that's the only one that we need uh, uh, to help us through uh, uh, the trials and the storms uh, uh, that we're going to face in our walk with the Lord. Uh, uh, but old Gideon went down there and he began to say, Lord, uh, I'm going to put out a fleece. Uh, and he put out that fleece two different times. One morning it was dry uh, and the next morning it was wet uh, and all this and that. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyhow, uh, he began to believe the Word of God. Uh, and Brother G.C., when he went out there... Uh, with 300 uh, of them, the Bible says uh, that he uh, uh, won the battle, didn't he not? Uh, I tell you, you know why? Uh, because he finally realized, well, I've got God. Uh, he's bigger than the problem that I'm coming up against. Uh, that's what we're going to have to realize, church. Uh, we're going to have to realize, God, uh, I may be a fight in the powers of hell, uh, but you are still yet bigger than the problem. Uh, how many believe that? Uh, I tell you, I believe that when we can make God uh, greater than the situation, uh, greater than the powers of hell, uh, that's standing in mind your way. I believe that we can overcome them, don't you? I tell you tonight, church, God wants you to make Him number one and bigger than your problem. Bigger than your problem. Moses didn't have a big military army following him. No, sir, you know what he had? Uh, uh, leading them out of the bondage uh, into the land that was flowing with milk and honey. Uh, he had nothing but a bunch of murmurs and complainers. Uh, ain't that what the Bible said that they done? Uh, and you know what? Uh, uh, that stopped them from going into the, into the promised land. Uh, uh, from uh, what was it? 40, uh, 20 years and uh, upwards, the only ones that got to go in. The rest of them died in the wilderness. But here comes here come the enemy behind him all the way. He didn't have the big machine guns that we had today and the big airplanes and the big tanks and all that. Uh, all he had was God. Uh, and that's why he had to steal away and go and pray uh, and say, God, help me. Uh, uh, no doubt that man fought a uh, uh, discouraging spirit when he heard everybody uh, uh, talking or uh, running him down and saying, uh, uh, why well, you didn't do nothing but bring us out here to die. Uh, but you know what? Moses was uh, trying to take him uh, into a place that God uh, had promised him. Uh, and God has promised me a new life uh, uh, beyond this life. Uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, the devil wants us to murmur and complain uh, uh, so that we won't be able to make it there. Uh, uh, why that church over there, uh, uh, they hold church too long. Uh, I don't want to go over there. Uh, uh, they sing too much. Uh, I don't want to go over there. Uh, uh, they preach an hour and a half. Uh, I can't hardly stand that. Uh, but ain't it funny? Uh, we can go down to the shopping mall uh, and spend hours on top of hours. Uh, uh, but you know what? God uh, and God wants us to make him greater uh, than the problem that you and I are facing today. Uh, and when Moses come up to the sea, uh, you know what he done? Uh, he said, now Lord, the devil may be on my trail uh, and the mountain on this side of me uh, and the Red Sea is before me. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you're greater than it all. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, and God caused the east wind to blow that night. Uh, and he told Moses to stretch his rod out over the sea uh, just like you and I need to do sometime. Uh, we need to 
take the word of God and say devil look at here the word says this and I'm going to believe it and when Moses stretched his rod out over the sea the Bible says that they crossed over through mud up to their knees no he said over dry land dry land she was dry as a cob I believe that the dust was coming out under her feet as they was crossing that, don't you? But you know why? Because somebody made God bigger than the problem that was a trail on them. Somebody believed God was able to take them across to the other side. Church tonight, we wonder why so-and-so has got healed because they make God bigger than the report that the devil gave them. We got to believe the Word of God, Brother Mark. No matter what the devil may say and brother man we got to believe in the word of God I tell you tonight God is alive and he's alive forevermore give him a hand would you oh Elijah oh Elijah he was a man that believed the word of God that believed the voice of God there he was up against 450 that believed in their God. He was standing there. He knew that they was not a servant of God, that he was a servant. Evidently, they must have been doing some cussing or something. He knew that they didn't have the God that he had. He said, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make us an altar here and we're going to place a sacrifice upon it. Uh, and listen, if the God that answers by fire, uh, uh, that's the God that we're going to believe and we're going to pray to. Do you agree with me? Uh, and they agree with him. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, he told them, it said, since you are many, uh, I'm going to let you go first. They begin to call upon their God. <clears throat> there was 450 of them. Somebody already got a hold of God. Shut if he was alive, if he was a real God. And the Bible says that they begin to call upon their God from morning till noon. No answer. Oh, Elijah kind of got tickled at him. He began to laugh and make fun of him. <coughs> all he done just made him just a little bit madder. That's all he done. Ain't it funny how that when you're really aggravated about something, Somebody can laugh at you and seem like that just ignites you. I've been there, ain't you? I've been into something that I just ain't, ain't sweating, beating, and thumping, mashing my fingers, Brother Mark, and ain't nothing went right. One fellow can come in and laugh, and you're ready to knock his head off. That's the truth. But old Elijah, he began to laugh at him, begin to mock him and say, maybe he's, he's pursuing or maybe uh, uh, he's gone on a journey uh, or maybe he's asleep uh, and needs to be awoken. But you know what? Uh, and the Bible says uh, that they uh, begin to, uh, to come up at even uh, until the evening sun uh, and they begin to cry out, no God. Nobody answered. Still get no answer. They jump upon the altar. They begin to cut theirself until blood gush it out of them. I get what the word says? And the Bible says that old Elijah, he began to place the altar back, prepare that sacrifice, and all he done was call upon the Lord. God moved. Fire came down out of heaven and it, and, 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 and it licked up everything that was, that was, that was in his path. Uh, he made it impossible. He, I never did see water burn to you. But he had them fill up barrels of water. I think about 12 barrels of water uh, and to pour it up over that sacrifice and the wood and everything, Brother G.C., was soaked, trenched in water. Uh, and the Bible said that when Elijah called upon the Lord his God, uh, a fire come down out of heaven. Why? It's because Elijah made his God bigger uh, than the God that they were the servant. Uh, a church tonight, we serve a big God. Uh, we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, and you know what? You want to know what his name is? Uh, his name is Jesus. That's the one it is. Uh, uh, they ain't no two or three. They ain't no four or five. Uh, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, uh, that's good enough for me, ain't you? Uh, I'm glad to be called by his name. Uh, uh, you wonder sometimes why. Uh, and Brother Mark, that we fight so many devils, so much hell, it's because we got the revelation uh, of who God is uh, and what his name is. Uh, and that's why the devil is fighting you, uh, because you believe in the Lord. Uh, you believe in the great I am. Uh, you know the Savior uh, that hung between the heavens and the earth. Uh, 
Uh, that's why the devil's on your trail. Uh, he don't want you to have that revelation uh, and that he told Peter. He said, Peter, uh, the flesh and blood ain't revealed this unto you, uh, but my Father, the Spirit, which is in heaven. A uh, church tonight, I tell you, uh, and God's a big God. Uh, I want to make him greater than all the problems that I have, don't you? Uh, oh, Abraham, he loved his son. Uh, and you know how you love your children. Uh, you'll lay your life down for him. Uh, and but God spoke to him one day and said, Now, Abraham, uh, I want you to take your son uh, and I want you to offer him up as a sacrifice uh, uh, in the land of Moriah. Uh, and oh, Elijah rose, uh, Abraham rose up that morning early, the Bible says, uh, and he set out with the journey, didn't he not? Uh, him and his uh, son and two servants. Uh, and the Bible said that he went three days and he, when he got to the third day, he seen the place afar off. Now this was a son that he had waited on for years and years and years. Now here he, here he come, had to offer it up as a sacrifice. Couldn't you imagine what the devil was telling him? Abraham, you sure that's the voice of God? Are you sure that's God is speaking to you? Uh, this is supposed to be the, uh, the promised seed. Uh, if you kill him, uh, uh, what about, what, what, what about uh, uh, all, this, all the blessings that's supposed to go to Isaac? I can imagine the devil really giving him around, don't you? Like he does us sometimes when God tells us to do something, we sit there and say, God, uh, uh, was that you, Lord? Uh, uh, tell me one more time and I'll do it. Uh, and God sometimes will tell us one time uh, and that's it. Uh, the Bible said obedience is better uh, than sacrifice. Uh, uh, sometimes he didn't how uh, how good we do it, uh, but it's because of obedience. Uh, and old Abraham, uh, the Bible said that he, be, that he uh, uh, took his son Isaac uh, and he gave, gave him the wood and, and, and the uh, sacrifice. Uh, and he took the fire and the knife in his hand and he began to sit out on his journey. Uh, he looked at his servant and said, Stay here with the ashes. Me and the lad's going to go yonder and worship, and we will return. Ain't that what he said? What he was saying, God's bigger than what I've got to do. Abraham knew if he had took his child's life that God was going to raise him right back up because uh, and God do not lie. He does not lie, Brother Matt. Uh, uh, the Word of God will not lie. It will always prevail uh, uh, whether you believe it or whether I don't. It don't matter. It don't matter. We ain't going to change the Word of God now. The Word is right above everything else. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but he said, My Word will not fail. Ain't that what he said? I've got another verse I want to read to you. It's in Romans chapter 8. This is Paul saying, <coughs> Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall I then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God wants us to be blessed. He said that he would that we would prosper be in health, even as our soul shall prosper. And he said, verse 33, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God, elect? It is God that judges the fire. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is he? Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh the intercession for us? Here's where I want to get to. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life <coughs> nor an angel nor principality nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
What was Paul saying here? Paul saying, my God's bigger than anything that I will ever face. That's what he was saying. He was saying, I'm going to make God bigger than any trial that comes my way. Now, the Bible says that you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why well, hope for that which we see? It's only temporal. But hope for that that we don't see through faith. Church, we need to make God bigger than our problem. So many folks today, they're... <coughs> They're putting limits on God. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stand or not. They probably won't, Brother Mark. They probably won't. When Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the Bible said uh, there sat a, 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 a man that was lame from his mother's womb who they brought daily and sat at the gate called Beautiful, didn't he? That's what the Bible said. This man, I don't know how old he was. I never did get into research and see but he was, he must have been at least 20 some year old, probably, or maybe 30 or 40. I don't know, you may know. <clears throat> but the Bible said that he was carried there daily to ask alms of everybody that would go in, hold out his cup. They would drop him money as he, as he would go in. Peter and John went by him probably numbers of times. One day they come through and they said, God greater than the cripples that's on this boy's life. They made God bigger than the situation that he was facing. And the Bible says that he seen Peter and uh, John just about to go in, he asked an arm of them. They said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give into, unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Arise up and walk. And the Bible said that he reached down and lifted him up. Uh, and you know what he done? Uh, the Bible said that he went throughout the temple, didn't he? Leaping and praising God. Why? It's because somebody uh, made God bigger than the problem that he had. A uh, church day folks sitting around among us tonight uh, uh, that need a touch from God. Uh, are we going to believe God? Uh, or are we going to say no? Uh, uh, their problem is greater than the God that we serve. Church, uh, uh, tonight God wants you and I to believe uh, all things is possible to him that believeth. And tell what the word says. Jeremiah said, is he anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, uh, no, sir, they're not. Uh, uh, they ain't a problem too big uh, that God will not move if we'll believe in him. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord, they, he runs to and fro throughout the whole earth, showed himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Ain't that the Bible? I believe tonight we need to make God bigger than our problem, don't you? I want to make him bigger, Sister Barb, than my problem and my wife's problem and her family's problem because God didn't die that we would just wait to get over yonder to have joy and peace. We can have it right here, can't we? How many believe that we can have a joy and peace and uh, have everything that we need right here? I tell you, I believe that we can, don't you? Uh, they ain't a devil too big to, uh, to stop us from having peace and joy uh, right here. I don't believe they are, do you? He may attack our bodies one way and from another, but we got to be like old Paul. we got to believe like old Paul did. Paul said, I magnify him. My for death. My for death. I, I believe that he's greater, don't you? I hope you've been blessed by the word tonight. I'm going to get shut up and get out of the way. But I, I really appreciate this opportunity to come over here tonight and preach a word from the Lord. I hope you've been blessed by it, and I hope that it will build your faith up. I hope that it will cause you to look at your problem and say, God, you're bigger than this problem that I've got in church. I know that we all got some kind of a problem. Brother Mark, I, I may look at your problem and say, wow, that ain't nothing. You may look at mine and say, oh, wow, that ain't nothing. But to me, uh, it might be a big mountain. Mine. Uh, uh, your problem might be a, uh, might be a hard battle. Uh, but I tell you, God is greater. He's bigger than the problem that we have. If we can only believe in Him uh, and believe in the Word of God, I believe that we can have victory, don't you, uh, over top of the devil. I believe that we got power over the devil. I don't believe the Word of God lies to you. Uh, the Bible says He has given us power over some of the powers of the devil. Did He? No. Uh, he said over all power He has given us. Church, why not exercise uh, uh, what God has given us? Uh, if we don't exercise what God has given us, uh, uh, you know what it's going to do? Uh, it's going to dry up and go away. Uh, uh, you may not believe me, uh, but let me compare this. 
uh, uh, take your arm and tie it up for two months uh, and see how much strength you lose in. Uh, uh, you know why that you can move things? Uh, it's because that you work yourself every day. That's the same way with the Spirit of God. If we don't exercise, Sister Bar, what God has given us, uh, uh, the devil's going to have a field day on mine and your blessings from God. He's a doing it, ain't he? How many, how many believe the Word of God tonight? I believe the Word of God, don't you? I love you and I appreciate you. If you want to pray, the altar's open. If you need the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, you're going to have to have it. I believe that we're going to have to have it, don't you, uh, in order to make it. I really believe that. Uh, but church tonight, it's for you. Uh, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to fight a wool with it. Uh, believe in the Word of God and you will be blessed. May God bless you and I love you and appreciate you for your time. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Thank the Lord for the Word. Did that do anything for anybody tonight? I said, did that do anything for anybody tonight? I know some it should have. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Ain't God good? Don't God give you what you need when you need it? Amen. It ain't all the time what we want. It's what we need tonight. God will give us what we need. I thank God, amen, for giving us what we need tonight. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, like he said, this altar's open. If, if, if that message touched you tonight, I just felt this dear in the whole word, if that message touched you tonight and you say, yes, Lord, that's me. I want to apply this to me, not to the one right of me, not to the one left of me, but I want it to come out of me. I want it to come out of me. I ain't taking this no more. I'm drawing the line in the sand. Amen. And letting God be God. Amen. I'll not walk out of here with the same thing that I came in with. Amen. But I'm leaving with the anointing. I'm leaving with deliverance. I'm leaving with the knowledge that I have power because God gave me power over my enemy tonight. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Did God, amen, hallelujah, did he move for you tonight? Hallelujah. This message went out tonight. It went out. If you had a problem winning battles lately, it may be that you're trying to take it upon yourself. It may be that the preacher preached the truth tonight. You've been on sad sack and gloom and doom. Say, well, bless God, I'll fight it myself. I'll take it on myself. You go ahead, baby, and get your brains beat out. Amen. But I'm going to trust God. I'm going to say, Lord, this is a tag team match here. I want to tag you in this thing. You slam the devil on the floor, I'll get right on the top of him. Amen. Praise God. But I ain't taking it no more because, amen, my daddy, hey, he not only owns a cattle of a thousand hills, uh, he owns an army, amen, that the world can't defeat tonight. He made me victorious. I love him. Sister Barbara, you going to sing? If anybody got the victory tonight, if anybody wants this message applied to your life tonight, amen, prayer, you're, you should look down and your plate should be clean. Amen, hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you what tonight, that message was being preached tonight. Amen, God said, tell them their plate ought to be clean. But he said, tell them, if they'll look around, they'll take up 12 baskets. Amen, because I poured it out on them tonight. Amen, they'll take up 12 baskets. Honey, God's in it tonight. God has blessed her. Amen, and if that message has touched you tonight, I want to see you around that altar tonight. I want you to make an open proclamation. Lord, I received this thing. I received it in your name, Lord. Hallelujah, praise Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Pray tonight. Amen. As she sings. I got a try, God. Found in the be alright. I try, God, and a try, God. Found in the be alright. I try, God, and a try, God. I found in the be alright. Well, I try, Jesus, and he's alright. Well, I tried to move on a mountaintop, found in the be 
to be all right. 